set up in my garden. Um, I just went, I've got some new um, photography equipment, uh, you might have seen from a previous video. Um, I've got a Godox uh, X-Pro uh, trigger, which uh, now is capable of giving me high speed sync. So I've got three flash guns, which I've got set up here, which is um, three Godox TT600 flash guns, which also do high speed sync. So I just wanted to test this out. I've never done it before, so I don't know if it's gonna work, but we'll give it a try. Um, so as you can see, uh, I've got my orange background. I've got a, a product here. I've um, got some orange juice. Uh, I'm using my Nikon 85 f1.8 as well for this. I've got a, sort of my trigger here so I can press the shutter release as well while I'm doing anything around here. Um, and what I'm, while I'm doing it in the garden, uh, one, it might get a bit messy, and two, I want to test the realms of high speed sync on, everyone seems to do it on portraits, but I want to test it on uh, water sort of splash photography. Um, so my initial thing is I'm going to get an exposure. Um, the only downfall of the Nikon D750 is it goes a maximum sync speed of 4,000th of a second, where my D7100 does 8,000th of a second, but um, I'm gonna roll with it, give it a try, 4,000th of a second, try and, we're gonna try and block out all the ambient light, which it should do at 4,000th of a second. Um, my settings are, let's have a look, 4,000th of a second, F11, at, and at the moment, uh, in ISO 100. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a test shot and we look on the back, see if it's blocked out uh, the ambient light because the sun's behind us and it's creating all sorts of shadows on the background. So we'll do that. And then you see we've got a perfectly black background. So uh, well the sun's coming over as well. So let's do another one. Yep, it's still perfectly black. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the background flashes which I've got on set to group A channel one. I'm gonna switch on the X Pro trigger. And uh, I'm gonna switch on high speed sync from the trigger itself, which it has done. But I'm not sure if it's uh, switched on, on the flash guns itself. I'm not sure if I have to do that manually. So what I'm gonna do, this is, uh, they're both set F uh, 16th power. Let's choose a I'm gonna go for quarter power just to see what happens. Right, so there we go. Right, there's nothing there. So what I might have to do is just turn on high speed sync. Oh, actually, no, it is, high speed sync is set on the camera. So let's just turn the power up. Let's turn it up to full power, because I've got the high speed sync uh, symbol there. Right, as you, as you can see there, we've got, um, it's lit up a little bit on the background. Not as much as I want it, but don't forget we're using flash guns, which are not as powerful, but at least we've got some light on the background. Um, so what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna increase the ISO to 400, to let a bit more light in, and see if that creates anything. And there we go, we've got a uh, orange background now. So, so yeah, there, there we are, we've got our orange background. Uh, that's at four, four thousandth of a second. So, you know, now we know why people want more powerful sort of strobes and flash guns, which you can get, I think it's the AD200s, and then you've got the 8600 strobes which are hopefully getting to the realm of at some point but um, now we've done that what we're going to do is we're just going to put this flash gun a bit as close as we can and just try and illuminate the front of the bottle now this is on the, the same group so let's just do a test and let's put it reset it now so as you can see group A channel 1 and it's at full power uh, and it's at 24 millimeters the zoom they're all at 24 millimeters i'm just going to try that first of all now let's have a look and see what so it's spot on already absolutely absolutely brilliant so we've got orange background the bottle's illuminated and now i'm just going to put a little bit of blue tack behind the bowl so i know where it was Right, 
so there we go so wow 4,000 for the second that's brilliant so I've got a good basic exposure so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to tip a bit of orange now the reason I've done this is uh, there we go it's because I uh, didn't want to do this inside right okay that looks quite nice let's go so uh, I'm just gonna have to get some more orange juice all around here so I want it covering the whole lot right there we go that's brilliant so normally what I have to do when I do what special photography I normally have to do it indoors and wait until late in the evening until it's dark and then illuminate uh, the sort of product with a flash of light on a long exposure shot so I'd do a long exposure say two seconds do the splash and then sh do it on rear curtain sink shut the shut up um, on the camera the flash goes off and it's actually the flash duration that captures the sharpness of the picture so now with this technique it means I can do it anywhere I want if I need 8,000 8, of a second I can I can swap over to my Nikon D7100 um, and do it that way so I've got that option but what I'm going to do here is I just wanted to catch oh, one that looks quite nice right so what I'll do is I'm just trying to get I'm not sure if that's caught out I might need to sink a bit deeper so it's not actually catching the splash some orange onto the product that's, that's looking really nice really nice and uh, as you can see I've chosen an orange background orange juice because the product I'm using is a very orangey sort of golden colour so yeah, so I'll take a picture like that. Now what I've got to be careful of is um, going crazy with the flash guns. I don't want to be keep going pop, 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 because uh, what they're doing is they're, I don't want to go into the definition of high speed sync, but they're, they're doing loads of little um, flashes in one single exposure. So that's it really, an easy setup. It only took me about half an hour to set this up. The high speed sync works. Um, obviously I'd like higher power flash guns, but for now, um, yeah, it's fantastic. It's working. Let's try and get some shots of this uh, product. Let's go. each uh, a Godox uh, X Pro trigger I think that was about 60 pounds for just over 200 pounds um, you've got a high-speed sync cheap setup where you can take anywhere with you and stuff so uh, yeah let's take the photos into Photoshop and, and put them together and see what they look like so see you later right so here we are in Adobe bridge here's a some of the pictures that I took with various splashes uh, didn't take that many like I say it was more of an experiment and testing out uh, my new equipment um, but already I see quite a few mistakes 
like you see the shadows in a lot of these pictures could uh, sort of ruin it or make processing that, that little bit harder um, but anyway I've sort of chosen three pictures to get started so this one at the top which is going to be the base picture and two with splashes on one where the liquid's hitting the top excuse me and then one where the liquid liquids on the bottom I'm going to use there and I'm going to combine all three in Photoshop so let's uh, open in camera raw all I'm going to do is select all and then just uh, do a lens correction all three I'm just going to open all three as copies in Photoshop so I'll just give that a second right one thing is I'm not an expert on Photoshop um, but this is just a quick um, example of how I do it how I'm going to put them together it may not be the way everyone else does it but it's the way it works for me and what I'm used to um, I'll be using a Wacom uh, tablet and pen as well to do this so there we go so there's the, the base image and I'm going to need the top bit here and the bottom bit here in this base image so <clears throat> first of all let's uh, start with the top so what I'm going to do is uh, select all copy and then I'm just going to edit and then paste so that's the new layer on top of the original image now what I need to do is just to make sure they're lined up properly I'm going to use the lid I'm just going to drop the opacity of this layer and as you can see they're misaligned so I'm just going to click the move tool and then use the arrows on the keyboard just to fine tune it and align it up it doesn't have to be totally exact either so that looks about right so just increase the capacity I'm just going to get a, a, a layer mask on the go there ready so what I want to do is I want to select all the liquid here so I'm just going to try different things I'm going to try the magic wand tool so there we go so basically I've selected let's just get rid of some of that there we go so this is what we've uh, selected here don't matter about this bottom bit so then what I'm going to do you know, do control I on that and then what we've done was just deleted painted black all over here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the deselect as I'm only doing this quickly so you can just see so what I need to do is uh, click a brush and I'm going to need black so I'm going to need to paint so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint the basis layer back in get this bit done as you can see it's filling the layer mask there so what I'm going to do is and also I like the bottle from the, the bottom layer so I'm going to get rid of that in a minute so let's just get rid of this let's just get rid of that there we go make life a lot easier instead of just going around there so let's get that done right now what I want to do is I just want to bring in the old bottle so I'm going to use a small brush see how quick and simple that is just you know and I'm sort of rushing it a bit just to show you how it works and that's it that's the, that's the top bit done right 
so I just want to get rid of that. I'm just going to press J for the healing brush, enlarge it, just get rid of that for a minute. Just make life easier afterwards. Right, so then we go, we've got a bottom layer there, so now we want to choose this image here. So select all, edit, copy, edit and paste as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to align, get rid of that just, and I'm just going to align this image up now with it as well. So click the move tool on the top left hand side. Um, I'm just going to let's move it more into place and then zoom in then we'll fine tune it with the arrow keys because they're really sort of mic it's like micro managing the movements that's about right so there we go so we can pop the layer back up on there create a layer mask and then we might do this a little bit different the selection I'm going to use press Q and go into quick mask I'm going to choose the brush tool and then as you can see I'm painting pink onto the bits that I want to keep so I'm just going to go over all the bits I want to keep here and I'm going to speed this bit up so when it's done I'll show you what to do next so if you just hold on and watch and enjoy the show finished quick editing uh, the splash that I want to keep I'm going to press Q again and now I get the marching ants now what I'm going to do is just click any sort of tool that choose choosing then select a mask and then uh, what I'm going to do is click invert as well 
So that means now we've chosen everything outside to protect. So we're going to anything we copy and paste will be inside the marching ants now. So you know I've done a pretty good line as well. But you know you can do other stuff like smart radius, and then see if any of that helps. See, it's sort of bringing the marching ants a bit closer to the, the liquid as well. Does a really good job. So you can sort of mess around with that. There we go. And I'm just going to feather it a little bit by two pixels just so uh, we get more of a smoother edge as well. So what now I'm going to do... <coughs> Make a little mistake. I'm going to deselect it. I'm going to click Control i on the mask. And then I'm going to click Select and then Reselect. And then I'm going to edit and then fill and then I'm going to fill it with white and then I'm going to deselect it as well so as you can see it's done a pretty good job of selecting the liquid and you've got the reflections there <clears throat> and then all I need to do is fine tune this bit around the bottle here so we still selected the layer mask B for brush, and then I'm just going to paint black on. And now I'm just going to soften the brush. Let's put that there. So you know, you just play about this one, whichever way you think makes it look more sort of natural. And just lower the opacity of the brush a bit. Watch out, just lower the brush. Just, just do some brush strokes and a lower opacity just to blend it in a bit more. There we go. So. So that's that done. As you see, it's pretty good. Now, what we're going to do is bring back in the other uh, layer, and that's it combined. So, I mean, you can use as many layers as you want, as, many, as much liquid as you want, and have it splashing all over the screen, be as creative as you want. Um, you can do adjustments on different layers as well, but I'm just going to now quickly going to flatten the image. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a, a curves. And this curve there just to boost the contrast a bit. There we go, that'll do. And then I'm just going to give some hue saturation. Just going to change the reds a bit and give it more of a orangey colour that I was going for at the beginning. There we go, so we've got more of a yellowy orangey colour as well uh, yeah and you can just do all sorts of things with this to make the image look nice I'm just going to do a, a few more things I'm going to go for lens correction just make sure that line's straight I've done a bit under there ok so that's just straightened up the image a bit um, there's all the other stuff we can do as well do think it's, this needs the bottom bit needs to be straightened up a little bit so let's do that quickly selection tool go there press control T around the bottom edit free transform and we're going to go over to skew and then all we're going to do is just straighten that up a little bit There we go, straighten up the bottle. And then what I'm going to do is a uh, layer, new layer, do an overlay, fill 50% grey, use my brush tool. <coughs> and then what I'm going to do here 
Let's just create a little bit of shadow and light effect. Let's put it down to 4%. Press X for black, so I'm just going to go the edges first of all. Just do the same for the reflection as well. Press X for white. I'm just going to lighten up the middle. Also, this is a little bit orange. I'm just going to lighten this up a little bit. So it looks a little bit dark there. Yeah, see the difference there? Just a bit of shading just to help that along. That'll do. Adjustments, just gonna lift the shadows on the, the lid a little bit as well. Move this back up. Do that control I and then X choose white and I'm just gonna bring the bring that in. I'm just gonna bring the shadows up a little bit on here just on the lid and then look out a bit and then we can just reduce the opacity and that just lifts that a bit as well <coughs> and then I'm just going to click J for the spot healing tool and I'm just going to get rid of some of these specular sort of highlights you want your image and how long you want to spend on it. Now normally all the actions I've been doing you'd normally keep all the layers all stacked up you need to go back and change things but for the purpose of this video I'm just uh, going through things quickly just to show you how I do it in the end result I'm just showing you what's possible with cheap sort of flash setup was taken outside the direct sunlight 4,000th of a second lit only by three flash guns. Trust a bit in raw, I think it does a, seems to do a better job. There we go, you can sort of mess about with it now if you want to sort of mess around with the settings a little bit. Oops, there we go. There we go, looks more vibrant. Now we're going to do is sharpen it up with a high pass filter, which I've set on 1.5 as all I always do. Click hard light, and uh, there we go. 
Oops, you sign there. Remember these from earlier. Just, just spot removal, get rid of the dust spots and everything. I think that'll do for now, just for the purpose of this video. But uh, there we go, there's the, the finished image. Mm -hmm.